Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. And we are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question. We can have fun with this one. And that is, why does the narcissist um, or this malignant you know, person who's just so self-absorbed, why are they so critical? Why are they so sort of berative and and talk bad about me? Why? And, and still sort of keep the relationship going. Um, I think that's a great viewer question. And it's to really understand, um, you know, that um, when you're with a, a narcissist, basically, you know, they, they feel that others who are around them are there to prop them up. It's not a two-way street. So when they begin... You know, the love bombing is like, just see how great it is to be with me. And then, you know, you then, let's just um, fast forward to when they begin to just sort of uh, talk down to you, pander down, um, have insults, you know, things that are, are, that they are not really usually open for derogatory comments, become derogatory or, you know, start, you know, uh, start a sarcastic sarcasm that is, you know, at your expense. Um, you know, nicknames that uh, make you feel stupid, you know, like they might call you stupid or something like that nature, you know, they, and it, yet they're still, you know, saying this quote unquote as if you're still in the relationship and they just begin to create this gap and this sort of riff, meaning like, it's almost like, you know, here's a, a, a you know, here's a hill, here's water, and then here's them, you know, on the cliff. They're always going to make sure that there's always erosion on you that there's always going to be something that they can crumble off that they can like a pecking order like a chicken in a you know they're always going to find one little place to peck at and just sort of blow that out until it really begins to hurt and sting and then eventually you want to exit the relationship but they do it why do they do it i think is a question because it gives them leverage just like um like a just like a a, a you know, um, a, a construction crew that wants to demolish and then clear the way and create the gap and then build one up here and one build down there. They just rearrange, you know, like a, like an emotional bulldozer and construction crew, they, they create this ladder. They create this staggered effect. They create this, I'm always better and you're always down here. And they'll make sure that you will stay there and go a little bit lower or a little bit higher depending on how much control and what they're getting out of the relationship. But when they get that higher vista, they're always trying to keep themselves, you know, like they are the top of the game and that they are looking for other options, other opportunities, you know, that overshadow you and that, you know, keep you in a semi-abandoned state. And so why, you know, why do they do that? Because it gives them that leg up. It gives them that you know, that, that false cheat where they can sort of exit the relationship and it gives them, you know, it's better to, you know, be shoveling it out than to be taking it. So they, they always sort of try to control the outcome of a relationship and it's oftentimes not fair. You know, the outcome does not, you know, A plus B should, does not equal C in these relationships. A plus B equals um, Q. And it's like, you know, where does this even equate? It does not add up. Um, and the more you try to try to figure it out, the more confusing it gets, especially if you try to keep them in the mix while trying to figure it out together. You did this and then we agreed that and you're trying to compare notes. I mean, you're just keeping yourself stuck. Um, and and so they, they do that because it gives them also an opportunity to blame you know, look at you, you're acting so stupid, um, you're acting, you know, this, and they'll be able to then, you know, create the problem that they're pointing the finger at. This is the problem. They, you know, they say that you're angry, but they're, they've already found a way in their own demolition crew to grind you down and then hurt, you know, that's part of their, their predetermined and sort of premeditated approach to relationships, you know. They have a pathological sense of self-importance and coupled with a lack of empathy. You know, you're not dealing with the average Joe, maybe that you thought you were dealing with, or you're not dealing with the prince in, or princess in shining armor that you thought you were dealing with. You know, this 
is net once again what you see is not what you get so um you know you know and then why you know but then so do you see then the 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 cause that creates this effect the why of this i feel is that then the narcissist they can sort of create you this in this sad way where you're not able to speak up you're not able to interject your feelings or your comments ever. Your your jokes aren't able to be funny enough as compared to theirs. Your car isn't going to be good enough as compared. Your talents, whatever it is, your kids, your house, there's always going to be this gap. And they're on the higher plane. You've got to be on the lower plane. They do that through minimizing, through false accusations, through the tone in their voice, through the withholding of normal warmth and communication and relationships. They keep that energy down. You know, a depressed feeling, um, you know, looking down. Your body is slumps down. You know, your face bleh, becomes long down, you know, um, where they're always trying to, you know, they have the only right thing to say about the movie. They only have the right thing to say about the dinner. They only have the right thing to say about the wedding. What's going on in the UK? What's going on? The, you know, their viewpoint has to always, you know, be the one with where it's at. And you just have to go, oh, yes, it is. You know, and just like chirp, you know, like a bird for for their musical. Um, and you don't get to ever say your thing. You don't get to say your feelings, your opinions, and be fully present. So it's like a lose, use it or lose it. If you're not able to be and use your presence in relationships and you're not able, able to be clear and you're not able to own your solar plexus and you're not able to own the air in your in your body and you're not able to have eye contact while this is happening and you've got a normal heart rate and you've got a normal eye focus and you're not fearful and you're not it you're you're just being present and you're in the heart and your mind is balanced and you're not able to have a communication that is open and honest communication at this level, then you're going to have real communication problems and then real outcome problems, you know, aftermath problems, divorce problems, financial problems, employment issues, uh, future planning issues, emotional, mental, psychological issues um, that are that are very real. You know, there are some people, oh, you know, it's not real. It's, you know, anxiety and depression are very real. Post-traumatic stress syndrome is very real. What do you mean you can't get up? I mean, people, they don't get it. You know, it's just when you break your arm and you can't lift up your arm, it's the same thing. It's the same, it's a physical, it's an emotional, psychological injury, wound. You know, sometimes wounds need surgical repair. Some other wounds are deeper and have more time. You know, it's it's just part of, of how they get down, how they get leverage, how they are able to, you know, use their their own emotional tools like bulldozers to kind of remove, you know, compartments of your emotional house, if you will. That's why I talk about it's your emotional real estate. So sometimes they just, eh, that's not good enough. No, we're not going to talk about your family. No, we're not going to talk about what you think about, you know, animals we're not going to talk about what you think about the environment. You're just going to, you know, listen or whatever it is that they do, or you should be doing, you know, and they might have like an anger or a force, you know, uh, you know, just trying to just grind you down like a meat chopper or like a, a tree shredder. Um, they're just trying to force their way onto you. And, you know, you have no say, you can't even talk back. Even if you said, I agree, you're, it's still not what they're hearing, you know, they're, they're, and it's a one directional energetic, like a lawnmower that's just sort of mowing over you energetically. And you just can't, you just have to follow along like a blind sheep or something, I mean, to even survive. So, um, you know, why, why do they do that? Because it, and then they can say, you know, they can basically weaken you and then say, look how weak you are. I mean, that's why this isn't working. I mean, it, they, they create the problem and then they, they then blame other people. So they get off the hook. They look good marching out like, well, I guess, you know, you know, they look, you know, like a knight in shining armor walking out, you know, they're like not even dusting themselves off. Woman's just like, uh, you know, you know, they've already got it. They've already played their scene. This is already something that they've written and copyrighted. 
you know, this is something they have already put out there. It's a, a play that they have already created. It's th the magic of their theater. And they need cast characters who sometimes get, you know, ended in the production. And you're just like, what? You know, you don't see it coming. This is not how, what I signed up for. There's all these feelings. Um, and so these, that is the outcome um, of, of that, that dynamic, you know, um, with that supply. So, and also, of course, because it makes them feel good about themselves to be surrounded with people who are always giving them things. So it's like if you have always people who are taking care of you, I mean, you're in a, a pain-free life. You've got someone who's giving you affection. You've got someone who's encouraging you. You've got someone who cares about you, who is always there for you, um, who talks up your job, who talks you up, who bolsters your ego, you know, and it feels like a good thing. And then they've got someone over here who's doing that for them. They've got this over, they've, they've got their entitlement going and a lot of people are there to take care of them. So they don't really have to be responsible. They don't really, you know, they, they just have everybody else, you know, <clears throat> as a buffer. You know, if you're not there, they've got this other one sort of in the wings. They've got another excuse. They've got something else. Um, and you basically don't have any leverage or in the conversation. And, um, so it, it, it creates a powerless, it creates a para, it creates a power vacuum. It creates a power dynamic where it's one directional and it's, it's there, it's theirs for their taking. And, you know, you just do your best to just stop away, you know, step away unscathed. And rather than pursuing it, because there's always a strong attractor factor in these relationships, people who are empathetic, people who have a heart for these people, they might have a sob story. Oh, won't you just go get me this? Won't you go, just go get me that? Why don't, you know, why don't we make me this? And then, you know, you're like, you're feeling good about rising up. You're feeling good in the relationship. It's great. You're being yourself. You know, you're serving them. It feels good to give, you know, and then, um, you know, you, you know, that's the love bombing. And then, you know, then you find though that they are always sort of taking that and then more, and they've got this going around full circle, you know? And so when, when, when something goes on and, you know, you can't, they, their supply is not doing it for them or they want more, you know, then they start pointing the finger at others, you know, and it, it, they, they walk away unscathed, you know, um, just as if you should have known better. And, you know, this is like not what it led up to. So it, there's, it feels very misleading. Um, but th that's a way for them to get off the hook. They don't have to fess up. They don't have to grow up. They don't have to mature into that because they don't have empathy. So they just don't really sort of feel that they've done anything wrong to them. It's just, you know, it's just them being choosy, selective. Um, just, you know, even though it was a good fit, the narcissist will oftentimes deny a good fit just because they don't have empathy. They don't have what it takes. They don't what it have, what it takes to sustain the relationship, to give you what you're needing to giving what you even partially needing, you might be wanting because you have an attraction there, especially if you have been, had an abuse in your past where you become very empathetic, you become very sensitive anyway to people. And then here it becomes, you become, you know, you're underneath, you know, uh, behind the scenes, you know, in your heart, in your subconscious, you know, you're picking up the vibes from this person that goes, I need people to like, you know, make me happy. And then you're like, whoa, that's the story of my life. Like, I didn't want to be, be abused. I wanted to have be happy. If you say, you're, I can make people happy. And then so you become very attracted to the opportunity of this person. And, you know, it's attraction, like, a, you know, a magnetic, a chemical attraction, chemistry, um, which can, you know, override, um, you know, what's in your best interest in this case. Um, and the narcissist takes advantage of that human condition. You know, they see it, they, they do the come hither, they do the psychopathic gaze, you know, they, they do the titillation, um, you know, and they do that superficial, just sort of romantic, but, um, a lot of it isn't sustainable. And so for them, it's a way for them to get what they're looking for. Like a, like a, they're like a relationship consumer, you know, it's a way for them to consume, like having oatmeal for breakfast, 
you know, it got them where they needed to go, you know, at, at the, at, on their terms, you know. And um, so oftentimes your terms are not set up for, their supply terms are not set up for discussion. It just becomes a silent um, understanding, you know, for some reason the people that if they accept once again to that redesign, you know, if you've accepted that you're not as good as, if you've somehow swallowed that big horse pill, then, and you've been empathetic, you know, and you've attracted this, then you're perpetuating, you know, the abuse from the past in the present as it looks. So, um, it can become, but for, for the narcissist, it's a way for them to then get what they need and not have to take accountability or responsibility. It's a way for them to stay perpetually cocooned, perpetually insulated, um, per, you know, perpetually looking, you know, looking like they're just, you know, the, the life is their oyster or whatever they say. And that everyone else was just sort of, you know, you know, they might have fondness for, but as a bond and attachment, it's going to be, it's going to be broken. It's going to be severed. It's going to be, um, the sparks, you know, are, aren't going to be, you know, energizing you. Um, they're going to get to a level of, of unhealthy and sick and toxic and, and brought with illness, even mental illness, physical illness, you know, real, real stuff as just as a result of a relationship, you know, is it worth it? It's so taxing. It's like, an emotional health tax. Why would you want to tax yourself, you know, and your joy and your happiness to the level and the degree, you know, just letting that emotional anvil just fall on your toe. It's like, move your toe, you know, let's get out of the way, step away from the emotional anvil, you know, and just woo, you know, be a little bit happy that you got out of the, the that, you know, that downpour, that, that, that negative download, you know, um, you know, the communication with them can feel like a negative emotional download where they're just trying to grind you down, get you under their thumb, create a feeling in you that they want for you. So you can't create your own feeling, can't coexist. So it's like, you have to realize that you have to initiate your own B place and your, that is, is not the same connection to that. You know, it's a whole different energetic space which is okay to have. Um, but they, if they're judgmental, then your energetic space is going to be wrought with flaws. You might not be perceiving them. You, maybe you're not a big flaw finder. So you, and maybe you're not a big judgmental person. Anything flies, you know, as long as this is a good person, maybe you look at them and they're not going to look at you the same way. <clears throat> so, you know, it, it's a way for them, you know, just to get a leg up and, the problem is you don't want to stay on for the train wreck. Um, you know, sometimes they want onlookers, you know, don't be one of the onlookers. It's just, it, it continues that same wound. So, you know, disidentify with that, I would say outgoing approach that you had take full ownership of it yourself, even though if it feels like, but they, but they, but they take full ownership for your perspective and take full ownership of what you felt and what you did, whether it was right or wrong, young or old, you know, take full ownership of what you picked up in the relationship because that was yours, you know, own it. Um, don't be ashamed. You know, it'll, it's like swallowing a big emotional horse pill. You know, this is what I was faced with. This is what I encountered. This, these were the players. This is, these were the feelings. These were the choices. These were the resources. And so it is. It's just like a little puzzle. I mean, the pieces are as they are. If something was really scary, eh, yep, that was over there, you know, and, but it doesn't mean it's you. <clears throat> you can see it, um, you know, from where it's at. Um, one moment. Um, you can, you can see it. Um, but I think it's important in healing um, as we do this healing tape here, it's important in healing to be able to look back at some very painful moments and just to observe. Um, and you might see yourself getting beaten up because oftentimes if there is um, abuse in your past, it has set you up for a predisposition predisp to have a sensitive, be a very sensitive heart 
especially sensitive to those who are hurt or insecure or need a hug or need affection? Do you see how you be, then become needed and then attracted to these people? And so it becomes a real power uh, driver in your life. Um, and in a, you know, you know, your momentum and your energy, but you know, the, um, the problem though with the narcissist is that it's, it's, it's a, it's a, um, a, sort of a, more of a consuming, um, rather than keeping the fire going that's enlarged once you're there. So enter, um, you know, what they get out of it is, is many things too, because, then they they feel that you are just kind of a pawn that can be moved and that they just sort of moved you out and so it can be very disempowering and therefore they can feel more removed and more distant from and not have to feel anything a narcissist does not want to appear just sort of normal like everybody else and so if they can distance themselves and then not have to go through you know, the grief, um, not have to go through the, I'm sorry, not have to go through the remorse. Um, you know, you're going to be okay. You know, parting amicably. I mean, you don't, you're, you're not going to get that oftentimes. If you get any, you're lucky you got what you did, you know, and your self image, um, may and probably is harmed in the process, meaning how you see yourself because the reflection, the narcissist or the psychopath relayed back to you was one that served want them, but that was not your truth. So then you've adopted um, an I am that's to please them and to serve them, but not in your truth or not in your best interest. And then there they go to grind you down. That's why people always feel that they have n nothing to show for in their life. I've got nothing. You know, um, I gave it all to this person. <clears throat> you know, all, the eggs were also in that one basket, you know. So they're like, how did I end up, you know, I feel like a nobody, you know, I got to do a rearrange and, you know, and so it is. Um, but they, there's a lot of reasons why they do it. When we talk about a psychopath, they, you know, the sad tricks that they do, the true trickery, um, you know, getting married behind your back, um, affair, just blatant affairs while you're, you know, just engaged, um, you know, switching of phones, um, you know, calling you and, you know, pretending to be like somebody else and then allure you. And I mean, just the games, I mean, just a really remarkable um, misdirection <clears throat> that relationships can take with these people. But, you know, for a lot of psychopaths, they get that dopamine hit of sort of, you know, um, outsmarting people, you know, uh, just sort of feeling like they have mastered, you know, um, just sort of an, an organized uh, laugh for them to see people just falling for them and then they see them dropping to them there it's entertainment or amusement um you're literally like a, a a toy or a pawn for their pleasure um like like a like a cat with um a squeeze toy you know basically is what is happening there it's for their amusement if you hurt a little bit squirm it even makes it more challenging more fun for them I mean, just like people do in video games, but we're talking real life here, people. We're talking real feelings, real time, and real emotions. So it's, uh, it once again, it's, you can, uh, you know, identify with the narcissist and, and the psychopath. It is self-serving for them. The relationship is self-serving for them, and there is no component or factored um, element, whether it's good for you or it's, you know, if you're even considered your needs considered, I mean, you might feel that they were never considered at all and feel like completely isolated and like you're, you missed part of your life. Um, you were waiting for them. You know, it was that, you know, after you just sort of maybe position as a codependent, as someone who had been abused or empathetic and being sensitive, if you became sensitive to this person, a narcissist is going to be very pleased. Oh, wow. Here's someone who's very sensitive, very responsive, you know, to my needs. The narcissist, you know, want others to serve them. So basically that is the environment. It's, you know, you know, serving them. Um, and especially if they, if they have a lot of pain in their past that they often do, Oh, you're a fixer upper, uh, to be there. I mean, you want to stop the bleeding. The problem with when you get really malignant is the bleeding gets more intense with them with time. I mean, 
just, you know, the it's just an open, open, um, sort of very uh, tangible wound that they will live under because their their mass can become so heavy and so thick that they can become almost alarmed, you know, but still carrying it. Um, so it's very strange, um, you know, and so really empathetic people that come down to be authentic and genuine and then more heart based, which is where your relationship will thrive when you're you're when you're you and you're authentic and you don't have that whole egoic um, sort of narcissistic chatter that oftentimes can be a, a lack of substance and very meaningless stuff in a relationship. So it's a way once again for them to promulgate and keep themselves up um, very much um, like we have discussed here. And there's so much more to that, but that is such a cool and great question. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussions, and support. Peace out. Have a beautiful day.